comfort. Um, and as you know, we sometimes do, although not that often, uh, a change has been made. We have been looking at faith and prayer. And I felt that another message in that line was actually right for us this week. So we're going to look this morning at Luke chapter 18 together. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8 in your Bible. I'd encourage you to open with me to our text. We'll have it up for you on the screen as well. Hear God's word as I read it for us. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray. Love that. Always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared about men. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, Even though I don't fear God or care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. I find this passage, this illustration from Jesus, very unique in its nature. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for His chosen ones, who cry out to Him day and night? Will He keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that he gets justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Let's look up here. We're going to watch a quick video um, that I think is a great illustration for us this morning. Lord God, help us to um, understand your nature this morning and also the value of persistence and the value of trust and faith when we don't immediately see that which we ask for. Lord, let us this morning understand the value of persistence and going after what is right and going after you. So Lord, as we, as we come this morning... Um, We're grateful for this text, and we pray that you would speak to us through it in Jesus' name. Amen. I found a story this week that I thought was rather good, so I'm sharing it with you. You can laugh at the end if you think it's funny. If not, you can be quiet, and I'll look funny, but that's okay. Um, I saw a story where there was a young man who went to a local pharmacy, and he got three boxes of chocolates. He went up to the register, and the pharmacist looked at him and said, that's interesting, why do you have three boxes of chocolates? A small box, a medium-sized box, and a very large-sized box. And he said, well, sir, if you must know, I've got a new girlfriend. I think she's great. I'm really big on her. And if while we're out tonight on our date, um, I'm going to go home, and I'm going to have dinner with her and her family, and then I'm going to take her out on a date. And if while we're on the date, if she lets me hold her hand, and nothing more, I'm going to give her the small box of chocolates. If she lets me kiss her on the cheek on the way home, I'm going to give her the medium-sized box of chocolates. And if she lets me take her for a real good time of hugging and and being together, I'm going to give her the really big box of chocolates. Took the three boxes of chocolates, went over to the girlfriend's house, sat down for dinner with her and her family, and he asked, would you mind if I said the prayer for the meal tonight? And she said, no, that would be great. And he began to pray, and he really prayed with passion and fervor. Oh, God, thank you for this time. Oh, God, be with me tonight. Be with us tonight. Oh, Lord, move. And he was really going. And he went on for five minutes. And at the end, the the girlfriend said, Wow, I had no idea you were such a passionate person of prayer, so in love with God. And he responded to her, I had no idea that your father was a pharmacist. It's actually not that tied into the story, but I thought it was really funny. I laughed out loud when I read it, so I I thought I'd share it with you. 
And the point being that it's important to pray in any circumstance. It's important to pray in any and every circumstance. When his disciples asked him, Jesus said we should pray always. We should be in prayer always. It's funny, I, I found this week that um, the Gallup organization says that more than 90% of Americans pray. Did you know that? More than 90% of Americans in the United States pray. 86% said they believe in God, and 83% say that God answers prayer. 70% favor Christian prayers to be spoken in schools. Some of you are wondering, because you're from out here, if that's true of this area. So I looked a little further and I found that um, Gallup reports that the people that were most in favor of Christian prayer in schools, 76% uh, were Republicans, 71% were women 50 and older, 71% were Midwesterners, and 63% were Southerners. So maybe not quite the numbers out here, but still a pleasant surprise. People like prayer and believe in God. And so we come to this, this parable of the unjust judge. And I think that it's interesting that Jesus always gives us a picture of God as, that, as, that, as the loving, perfect Heavenly Father gives us a parable of a very different kind of person in charge, an unjust one, to make a very important point to us about the importance of persistence in our faith. You know, I would say to you that um, we live in a, in a culture and a time where if we don't get what we want right away, we oftentimes go somewhere else, right? I mean, either I get it or I don't get it. I'm not going to sit here and keep doing what it's not working, right? So we oftentimes leave instead of persist in the place that we're in. We oftentimes look for a way out. And Jesus gives us this picture for a very important reason. There's a couple of points here that we need to understand. First is that prayer is very precious to God. We should say that together. Prayer is precious to God. Let's do it together. Ready? Prayer is precious to God. Now, for a lot of us, we believe that prayer is a means to an end for what we want. Right? I'm praying so that I can get X. But for God, it's different. For God, it's about relationship. See, he actually loves the part where we're talking to him. Not the part about getting or not getting what we want. I mean, he's with us. He cares about us. Romans 8, 28 says he's at work for our good in all things. But, but he wants the relationship. And what's funny is that when we are in need, oftentimes we go to God a lot more than we're content with what we have. Does that make sense? Now, he doesn't give us bad things. It's not in his nature. But he loves to build relationship with us, not just give us what we want. We see this continually. I mean, the greatest heroes of the scriptures are people who persisted and endured for a long time, even when in doing right, they didn't see what they wanted to see from the beginning. I mean, think about Abraham, the father of, 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 of God's people, was a hundred years old when Isaac, the promise, was born. And I don't know about you, but I would think that at 100, I'm probably not having that air. Right? I mean, we have so many stories. King David, the greatest king, it was like 13 years between the time of being anointed by the prophet Samuel to being crowned king. That's a long time to wait. Some of us, 13 days is too long for no answer to prayer. And we see through Scripture that oftentimes God prepares and sows into us what we need to be successful when what we're praying for comes to pass. 
And it's a really important truth for us to understand. I mean, I'm so struck by it all the time. You know, there, there's, there's so much that God does in the process of us persisting for that which we know is, is His best or His goal for our lives or a promise of Scripture. I want to point out here that Jesus is not saying that God is tight-fisted in answering prayer. Okay? He is not saying that God is tight-fisted in answering prayer as the unjust judge was. He was tight-fisted in giving justice. As we look a little bit deeper into this time, uh, in Jesus' time, judges oftentimes were corrupt in Israel. They were motivated by what they were given. And so it's not a reach to understand that in this case, someone might have been holding back justice by uh, approaching the judge and giving him favor to get what they wanted in this woman's case. Yet in the end, the judge finally decides that her persistence is more powerful than whatever he's been getting from the other party. What Jesus is saying is that if the unjust judge in this parable gives justice to the woman, surely God, who wants to answer our prayers, will give justice or answers to us also. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, have you ever thought about why sometimes we pray one thing but don't see that prayer answered for days, weeks, months, even years? I mean, we, we go back to that, that whole thing of how God is at work in the process. And I think that, that in, our, in our culture, we're so used to the push of the button, the click of the mouse, and we get what we want almost immediately. And yet, with the Lord, there's so much about the process, especially in relationships. I mean, here is, you look back at David. Here is David. He's writing songs and hymns, and he's killing lions and bears, believing that one day he'll have what God's promised him. And then finally, his first opportunity arrives. And I don't know about you, but I would think if I'm David, hey, I just killed the guy everyone's afraid of. I'm ready to be king. And instead of being king, he gets chased by the current king to be killed. I mean, you think about Joseph, who's doing everything right. Potiphar's wife says he did something he didn't do. He gets thrown into jail for years. And he has dreams where he reveals God's plans, and then he gets forgotten about for more time. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'd be kind of grumpy. And God says, no. I'm at work in the process. And I really want us to take that home today that as we persist, there's something that's so important about the process. And we find in the process that God actually helps us understand how we think of Him. I mean, it's so easy for, for someone who's not getting what they want to begin to think bad about the person they're asking of, right? And so oftentimes in the process, how we understand God, who we believe that He is, who we believe His nature is, His ability, His power, His love, His goodness, all of that is revealed in us. All of that is challenged. All of that is worked on. And unfortunately, there are some who go away. And there's always that temptation. But when we persist, believing that prayer is about relationship and that God's at work in the process, great things can happen. Now some are raised that we pray because there's an angry, mean, vengeful God that we're trying to appease and hold back the wrath from. This was actually a very Catholic principle if you see how it used to be taught. People lived in fear of punishment for not saying enough Hail Marys or doing enough religious activities. I mean, the Jewish people themselves were taught you had to give animal sacrifices 
to be forgiven of sins. So there's all this stuff that I find goes into the smorgasbord of thinking when it comes to Jesus in prayer. Some come in and they say, oh, Pastor, you don't understand. I'm a bad person. Bad, bad. God looks at me, and if I came into your church, the church would fall down. I've heard that multiple times through the years. And it's just, it's just a lie. If our God's power was contingent on how good we were, we were, what a sad, horrible world it would be. What a powerless, wimpy God we would have. So we have this truth that in the process, we discover more about Him. In the process, we grow closer to Him. In the process, we persist. We stand in faith. And we grow as we see Him deliver what He promises. There are three things that I think we see in the Scripture. The first one is, God is calling us to be persistent in prayer. God is calling us to be persistent in prayer. Two, God is calling us to be changed, transformed through prayer. Who's excited about being transformed today? Okay, hey. Really? I like that. So much of the time we want to be in control and we don't want to change. We're, we're growing, church. Come on. You know, we want His way. We want to be what He is, 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 is calling us into. I want to have less control and more transformation, but the two cannot go hand in hand. And three... God is calling those who truly enjoy and truly yearn for Him to spend time with Him and be um, to grow in intimacy. That's His heart for us. So much of the time, I think we, we think that it's about we think that it's about the destination. When so much of the time, it's about the journey. Because when we're strong in the journey, the destination looks the way it's supposed to. But these things have to happen. Persistence is a beautiful thing in faith. It's also a hard thing in faith. How many of us like what's hard? You know, we, we look at um, people who, you know, who, who really... Um, take good care of, of their bodies and, and then they're, they're big and strong and, and you know and, and in great shape uh, Donovan does this this is you know what he does and you have to be persistent in taking care of your body and eating well and, and, and being disciplined about getting into the gym and getting your, and what happens if you can do it you look great right some of you are like not in my gym well we're, you might not be eating or doing the right things but if, but if we're persistent and following the regiment, we're going to look a certain way. We're going to have certain results. It's the same principle in faith. God wants us to be transformed. If today I look the same as I looked 10 years ago, there's a problem in my walk with Jesus. I shouldn't look the same today as I looked 3, 4, 5, 6 seven, eight, ten years ago. You know, we are, we are changed by those key relationships, those most important relationships. I'm a very different person because of my wife in my life. I see things differently. I'm transformed through relationships. Not all relationships. The angry, angry mailman should not transform your life. But God transforms us through relationship and intimacy with Him again. This is His primary desire. His primary desire is us knowing Him and Him knowing us. That means our prayer life should consist of listening. Now, how many of us know we're busy? Who's busy? Yep, a few of us are busy, right? How many of us at the end of a long, long day love the idea 
of, of a movie or TV or that fun computer game or, or some of those websites you go to, Pinterest, is that one of the things? Facebook, right? And so also we've worked hard all day long. We've come home, we've had dinner, and now we've had our TV or our computer time or whatever it is, and then we go to bed, right? How many of us, that sounds familiar? Yeah, it's okay. But in that process of doing all those important things that seem important at the time, what's lost? Our time with him. And that's his greatest desire, his intimacy. And a big part of that is some of the best prayer times are, Lord, I'm going to speak to you about the things that are on my heart for two or three minutes, and I'm going to listen for ten. And some of you are like, oh, but pastor, that's so boring. It seems so long. I promise you this. If you start doing that, you're going to begin to hear things. Especially if you read scripture first, bring your things to him, take time listening to him. He actually speaks to us. He loves to speak to us. He loves to, to reveal himself in his ways, through his word, through prayer, even through, through other people that are, that are pursuing him passionately. But he wants intimacy with us. You know, some people come and they say, they say, Pastor, I feel like my life is always in crisis. And I say to them, well, when you're not in crisis, do you go to God? And they say, why would I need to do that? Maybe I know why you're always in crisis. He loves you too much to leave you alone. Some people are like, that's me. He doesn't, he doesn't, he's not me. He's loving. He's wonderful. He's abundant in love. And he takes every situation and he's at work for good. But we should, in our, in our core values, know that God, more than anything, wants intimacy with us. That He really wants intimacy with us. And persistent prayer, persistent turning to Him, leads to a greater intimacy and a greater knowing and understanding of the God who loves us. It seems like a small, straightforward parable, but it's profound when we understand what God's saying to us in it. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word. We thank you, Lord, for understanding that you are good in all things. And Lord, help us in our hearts and our minds as we understand you to understand the kind of love, the kind of calling, the kind of life that you want with us. And Lord, let it burn in us for more of you. Let us burn to be people that are persistent when it's hard. Let us burn to be people that are transformed by you through your word, through your spirit as we stand in your truth, in your ways, especially when it is challenging. And Lord, let us be transformed. Let us be people of intimacy. Where knowing you and loving you and hearing from you is the foundation for how we live and who we are. Thank you, Lord, that as we persist as we continue to bring to you that which is most important, we can trust with assurance that you will give us, that you will grant what we need, especially in relationship to you and your kingdom. Help us spread the message. Click on the donate button below or go to shermanoakspc.org forward slash donate. Thank you.